Hi guys and welcome to this my year 9 video on simplifying algebraic expressions. Could it get any more excited? My name is Darren from Asku. Thanks very much for watching. If you can do me the honor of subscribing to my YouTube channel, following me on TikTok, and obviously signing up to mathsguru.com where you can watch all of these videos and download the notes. What am I going to look at today? Hey, if you want to know that stuff, pause the video. We don't need to listen to me going on about learning objectives. But they're there if you need to know them. What am I going to do? Recap past learning. Well, in the last lesson, we looked at basically the fundamentals of algebra. How to you know, notice what an expression is, what a um, equation is. We know about pronumerals and variables and coefficients and constants and all that type of stuff as well. Now, if you don't know, go back and watch the video. Again, it's on mathsguru.com. Absolutely free to sign up. I'm pretty good if I do say so myself. Now, obviously, that was the fundamentals. That was the easy stuff. Hmm, I know, it wasn't that easy, but it was the basics that Year 9 is going to build on. And it's going to be really, really important that you understand the language of algebra. Because there are a lot of tricks, right? And I know Barry, Barry, Barry just is there to trick, 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 trickers. But let's do some more language now, okay? Let's look at something called like terms. Now, like terms are exactly that. They is basically the same letter. They have exactly the same pronumeral or variable. The coefficient can change. It can be positive and negative, whatever. But in this situation, you'll notice I've got 5x and 7x. They are the same. If you think of x as xylophones, I've got five xylophones and seven xylophones. They is the same thing. What about this? 3a squared and minus 5a squared, well, they are the same because of the a squareds, all right? I think of those, believe it or not, as square apples. Yes, I know you can't buy square apples. That would be silly. But I've got three square apples, and I'm taking five square apples away. Now, again, if I was in Coles, I'd be walking along. If I was teaching you now, I'd be, you know, my Coles analogy. I'm in Coles. I've gone in, and I want to buy three square apples. And suddenly, I'm like, oh, no, I don't need three square apples. And I'm going to take five back. And then it all gets very complicated because I don't have five square apples to take back. But anyway, so just be grateful you're not actually being taught by me because I don't make a lot of sense. What about this? Three apple banana squares. Yeah, I know. In my head, it all makes perfect sense. And 10 banana squared apples, are they the same? Apps are positively lootly. Now, because that floaty 2, if you notice, belongs to the B, and the A is on its own. It doesn't matter whether we write A, B squared, or B squared A. They are absolutely the same. And that's how we're going to go and try and trick you. Now, a lot of you out there are going, no, 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 no. And I agree with you. This is more correct. Mm, I don't like that. Right? This is conventionally how we would do it. We normally put letters in alphabetical order. All right? So just be aware that that's really, really important. All right? Again, these are the same. They are the same term, but the letters just in a slightly different order to try and trick you. Now, we can actually collect these things. And when we say collect, we can actually do mathematics with them. So as I've said here, we've got five xylophones and seven xylophones, well, obviously, I've got 12 xylophones. I can add those together. I am there collecting like terms. I is making it simpler as well. This is also simplifying because I'm saying, well, hold on, I can make that look simpler. I can collect those terms. I've got three square apples and I'm taking away five square apples. Well, obviously, I've got to have square apples. So in this situation, I've got three minus five, which is minus two. It's got minus two square apples. And the same as I just talked about here, I've got three apple square bananas, and I'm adding 10 square banana apples. And if I wanted to, I could write that out properly as apple banana squared or square bananas and 10 apple banana squared. Well, these things here are the same. So I've got to have apple banana squared. And then three plus 10 gives me that 13. All right, and again, we can throw so many questions at you but they're pretty much the same. Try and collect those like terms. Now, we can obviously look here and go, well, hold on a moment, these is not the same. And no, they're not the same, because you'll notice here I've got a xylophone, but here I have square xylophones. They are not the same, right? So I can't have xylophones and square xylophones. Doesn't make any sense. So in that situation, if someone said simplify, they're trying to trick you. You can't. Leave it as it is. In brackets, right? <laughs> I saw through your trick. What about this one here? Are these like terms? Well, they've got floaty numbers, haven't they? They do, but this is a floaty too, 
and that is a floaty three. So in which case I've got square apples and cubey apples. They're not the same. A square and a cube, not the same thing. And likewise here, if you notice, it looks the same, doesn't it? But it isn't, because here the floaty two belongs to the B, and here the floaty two belongs to the A. So again, we can't do anything with them. They're not like terms. Now Barry, 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 oh, Barry likes to trick us. And maths, I promise you, isn't hard. If you stick with me, you'll smash it by the end of this year. But Barry tries to make things confusing. He, he gives us all sorts of stupid language like multiply and times and product. They all mean the same thing. Why? Why do we do this to you students, all right? Again, it's to try and trick you. I know I hate it. I'm so sorry. I feel bad. But when you see through all the tricks, the maths probably is a lot, lot simpler than you think. So for example, if you go back to my last lesson, right? Between a number and a letter is a kissy kissy. And again, you're going to go, what is he going on about with a kissy kissy? All right, quick crash course. When I send my mum a card, I go, dear mum, love you. Kiss, 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 kiss. And it was weird because I was looking at these kisses and I go, hold on a moment. They're multiplication signs. Oh my God, maths is even in greeting cards. It's everywhere. So now I'm like, well, if I was to write three kissy kissy x or three times x, well, really, that looks like a kissy kissy. So the three and the x is kissing, aren't they? All right, don't go any further. Stop, stop, stop. No, stop it, right? Three kissy kissy x. So I say between numbers and letters, there are kissy kisses. It just makes me remember and not mess up. You've probably stopped watching now, haven't you? This guy's a nutter. Again, imagine having me as a maths teacher. Now again, whenever we try and trick you, we might write three divided by x. How often do we ever write the divide sign? Very rarely. So if there's a divide sign, it's there to trick you. Because really, we want you to write it like that. And if you remember, between the three, that line and the x, this thing here is a divide sign. Oh, hold on a moment. Have you noticed that fractions even look like divide signs? If you look at the divide sign on your calculator, you've got a dot, a line, and a dot. Well, those dots just stand for numbers. So there's a number and a line and a number. Hmm. It's a fraction. It's a divide. Life goes on. All right, common factors that can be cancelled in fractions. Now, things can be cancelled down. Now, what I want to, want to do is a little bit of an experiment with you because I can guarantee if I do this to you as I did to my mass group, you're going to make a mistake. Right, first things first. What is one divided by one? Hold on, why am I asking you to answer? I'm talking to myself. One divided by one is, it's one. Okay, what's two divided by two? Yeah, you said two, didn't you? Nah, it's one. What's 10 divided by 10? You got it, one. Why? Because any number divided by itself is actually one. We told you that. We've told you that years and years and years. But did you notice what I said? Any number divided by itself is one. This is where I now go, what is A divided by A? And a lot of people go, anything divided by itself is one. So in fact, A divided by A is one. What is B divided by B? One. What is x divided by x? It is 1. So any letter that has the same letter on the bottom, or any letter divided by itself, is always going to be 1. Hmm. How is this going to help us? Right. Well, I'm going to look at 6ab divided by 8b. Now, first things first. Let's imagine we can split this up and do our numbers first. Because if I wrote down the fraction a half and asked you to simplify it, would you? You'd be like, no, that can't be simplified. That's in its lowest common form or whatever we say. But if I said to you two on four, you'd be like, no, 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 no. That can be, oh, look, half my hammer's in. <gasps> uh, all right, you'd be like, no, 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 that can cancel down. I'm like, of course it can cancel down because we look for the highest common factor, top and bottom. I don't, I always half things. Two divided by two is one. Two, uh, four divided by two is two and I get a half. Stupid, yeah? Easy. But when we have fractions, if all of the numbers are timesed on the top and all of the numbers are stuck together on the bottom, and I literally mean that, they're all stuck together with timeses, then what I can do is I can say, well, now let's look at 6 divided by 8. Let's just cancel that bit down first. All right, so I'm going to put my pen to red. I know that 6 can halve to give me 3. 8, half of that is 4. Now, when I say half, I always divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2 until I can go. I can halve in my head. I don't care what the highest common factor is. Can I do 
any number, three into four. Can I cancel that down again? Is there any number that goes into three and four that isn't one? No, nah. so there we go, I've done that. Now again, sort of taking this, and I'm doing this really slowly so you can sort of see why this works. I can write that top now as three times A times B divided by four times B. Now with fractions, we can actually split them up. We can actually write that as three on four times A on one, I'll explain that in a moment, times B on B. Do you see where I'm going with this? Now all I've done is I've got the three times the A times the B on the top, and I've got four, and I can do times by one, I can add any number of times by ones in that I want to, times B on the bottom. Can I simplify three on four? Nah. Is the letter on the top and the bottom the same? Nah, so leave it alone, but here it is. So I know that that now becomes one on one. Now you're gonna say, but you said it was just one. Same, same, one divided by one is one. But what I can now do is I can say, well, when we multiply fractions, what do we do? We multiply the tops together and we multiply the bottoms together. So let's see what happens when we multiply the top. I've got three times A times one. Well, anything by times by one is just itself. So I again end up with three A on the top divided by, well, what is four times one? It is four. OMG, I have simplified that expression. ka -ching. Now we're gonna do another one. If you didn't understand that one, pause the video, go back, watch it again, try and work. Send me a message on YouTube, say that didn't make any sense. I'll do what I can to try and help you. Now again, they're trying to trick me here. What do you notice? They put that divide sign in. So I have 12, a squared b, I'm gonna write that divide, three, a, B. Right, well I'm gonna do things slightly different. I'm gonna do it the way I did a moment ago. But what on earth is this A squared? Well, again, anything that's multiplied by itself, or anything with a floating number, means basically it's multiplied by itself. So I'm gonna write that as 12 A, A, B, divided by three A, B. Okay, how many things do I have on the top? One, two, three, four. How many have I got on the bottom? One two, three. So I'm going to try and match them up so the A's are linked to each other, the B's are linked to each other, see what we can do. Right, well the numbers, we know that the numbers can stay as they are, so I'm going to write that as 12 on 3 times, right, let's look at this A. Do I have an A on the top and the A on the bottom that's the same? Yep, A on A times. I have another A on the top, do I have an A on the bottom? Nap. so I'm going to write that as A on 1 times. Do I have a B on the top that matches the B on the bottom? Yep, so B on B. Now again, why am I doing this? Because I know that any number or any letter that divides by itself is gonna be one. Well, look, A divided by A. <laughs> Hold on a moment, that's one. So I'm gonna cross that through and make it one on one. And I've got a B on B, cross it through and make it one. Oh, I've got my fractions that can also cancel down. What goes into 12 and three? Three. So threes go into that once. Three is going to that four times. So let's see. I'm now going to multiply all my tops together. I've got four times one times A times one. Well, all those times ones, I'm just going to ignore because when I times by one, it's the same thing. So I've got four A on the top. So it becomes four A on the top. And what about the bottom? I've got one times one times one times one. Ha! Huh? Oh my God, it's just one. So I could write divide by one on the bottom but we know that anything divided by one is itself, and there we go. Now there are other ways of doing this and canceling it down really, really quickly. Um, I can show you how to do that if you want to. All right, yep, okay then, let's do it a different way. 12 A, A, B on three A, B. Now when I do this, and you get a bit faster at this, I say, is all the tops multiplied together? Yes. Are all the bottoms multiplied together? Yes, so any letter on the top that matches the letter on the bottom, I can change into ones. So that A on the top becomes a one, that A on the bottom becomes a one, because they match. The B on the top becomes a one, the B on the bottom becomes a one. I can put threes into there goes once, threes into there go four times, and once again, I've got four times one times A times one, which is my four A, and I've got one times one times one, which stays as one. So it's slightly quicker to do it that way. I think of it as a shortcut, but I wanted to show you why it worked here. 
Simplify the following. When you multiply algebraic terms, it is awesome because what we do is there's kissy kisses between all of those. So that's the same as 3 times 2 times b. Now, this is a really simple example, but when everything is times, so we can actually move things around. So I always say, well, what's 1 times 2 times 3? 6. What's 2 times 3 times 1? 6. What's 3 times 2 times 1? 6. Same thing, I've just moved the letters around, uh, sorry, moved the numbers around. They're all times is together, but I've just moved all the numbers around. So, in this situation, normally we do this so that we can get our numbers together, because we know what 3 times 2 is. It's 6 times b. I can't do anything with a b. I can't collect it. There's no other b's in there. It's fine. Well, is that the simplest way to write it? Uh, not really, because I can join them back together. So I'm going to put my equals in there, and that becomes 6b. Moving on, let's look at the next one. I've got minus 2 times a, I'm putting that times in, times 3 times a times b. Well now, I want to reorder things because I've got my numbers, they're not stuck to each other. I can't do anything, it's just together. And I know it's got an a and an a. So what I'm now going to do is put my numbers together. So it equals minus 2 times 3 times a, putting my letters together, putting those like terms together, the a and the a together, all I've done is swap the order. I've got exactly the same thing. There's my minus 2. I've got an a, I've got a 3, I've got an a, and I've got a b. So all I've done is change the order around. But why? Well, because I can now do minus 2 times 3, which is minus 6. I can do a times a, which is a with a floaty 2. And what do I do with that poor lonely b on the end? Well, don't forget him, because he becomes b. So 3 times, uh, or minus 2a times plus 3b gives me minus 6a squared b. And again, you can shortcut this. As you do this, you get faster and faster and faster. What have we got here? Simplify uh, by collecting like terms. Remember, if you don't know what a like term is, we're going back to what we did previous lessons. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I've got 3x's. Is there anything else with just an x in it? You can have a number in front of it, but just an x. And obviously, yes, in this situation, I've got plus, no, sorry, minus 2x. But what about this plus 4? Does that have a letter? No, it's a constant. So in a way, that's its own term. Numbers that don't have letters are just its own term. There's nothing I can uh, simplify that with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 3x's minus 2x's is going to give me 1x. And the plus 4, there's nothing to do with it. Now, a lot of people get really upset here because it's not, oh, do I need to write the 1? No. Nope. When I've got 1x, I can just write that as x plus 4. What about the next one? Uh, well, I'm going to highlight my light terms. Let's see, I've got 3x there, and I've got a 4x there. I've got a plus 2y there and a plus 7y there. ka -ching. Highlighting them, and my brain is drawn to them to know which ones I'm adding up. Use colour in maths. I know it's not art, but it's fine. So 3x's plus 4x's is 7x's, plus 2y's plus 7y's is plus 9y. Can I make this any simpler? No, because I can't add xylophones and yaks. They don't go together. Leave it alone. What about the next one? See what I'm doing? Highlighting again. Right, what I got? I've got an a, b squared. I've got any more a, b squared? I do. I have a minus a, b squared. What's that minus? Oh, minus 1. Yeah, yeah. What about the next one? I've got minus 9ab plus 3ba. Oh, that can't be... No, uh, tried to trick me. All right, it's 3ab. I can do that. That's the same. And again, simply, just by swapping those two letters, we can make it look like a different term, but it isn't. All right, so 8ab squared minus 1ab squared gives me 7ab squared minus 9ab's plus 3ab's gives me minus 6ab's, and I'm pretty sure that is the end of this particular lesson. Now again, I could do thousands of examples. It's not going to help you. This video is coming up to 20 minutes. That's long enough to be able to do it, but it's really, really important. If you can do me the honour, please, of subscribing to my YouTube channel, following me on TikTok, and watching the rest of the videos would be awesome. Spreading the words with your mates, and maybe going over to mathsguru.com and signing up, because it is free, and you can download these notes. ka -ching. Put them in your maths book. Life is good. If I don't see you again, please take care and stay safe. All right, bye-bye.